With debt interest payments eating up more than half of government revenues, Ghana has hit the emergency button. West African nation has asked the IMF for a $3 billion bailout, proposed a debt restructuring plan that could involve losses of 30% for foreign investors, and is planning to barter some of the gold it produces for oil. Will any of these uh, help to stop the fiscal bleeding? Fred DeVore, uh, Managing Director of Apacan Securities, joins us from Accra to discuss further. Fred, good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, where are we with the uh, $3 billion uh, request from the IMF? Are de deliberations still continuing? Um, yes, uh, Rotus. Uh, well, we all know the government has had a series of uh, engagements with the IMF. Um, on a post-COVID recovery um, economic program, seeking a balance of payment support through a lending arrangement. Uh, several discussions have been had um, with the Ghana team and the IMF team, both in Accra and Washington over the past uh, couple of months. Uh, the IMF team was scheduled to be in Accra, and I think they're in town on December 1st. And I believe they're here to continue discussions uh, with the aim of uh, possibly reach an agreement um, as soon as possible, hopefully before the close of the year or by early January. Great stuff. Fred, I was about to ask you, in fact, I still ask you about your response to the, or what you make of the debt restructuring plan uh, for bondholders announced by Ken Ofori Atta, the finance minister. But I do want to look at some tweets that we just got in here from, uh, I think, the business correspondent at Joy FM, George uh, Wiafe. He says here, Ghana Securities Industry Association say they are rejecting the government's debt exchange program in its current form, as announced by the finance minister. And then uh, he continues and says that uh, the association in a statement maintained that looking at the way the debt exchange program is structured, it will not benefit its members and their clients. So I just, just throwing this in, what, what, what do you make of, I guess this, this, as things are developing now, what do you make of it? Well, I mean, and the, the GSIA, um, which is a, an association of um, players in the capital market. Um, they've joined the um, Chamber of Corporate Trustees and a few other uh, pension schemes to reject the, the proposal of the government. Um, what it is, is, I mean, what they state as their reason is the fact that the government initially constituted a five member board um, of industry players to consult on um, how the debt restructuring um, should take. But, to their surprise, last week, uh, Friday, they were called into a meeting and the Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Finance presented um, to them the, this um, debt restructuring or this debt exchange program in its current form. And um, they feel like it is not, uh, it's not something that's going to help um, its members in its current form. They, they, they agree that there has to be certain um, concessions or certain things need to be done with respect to debt but not in its current form. So they have now come out to explicitly um, reject the proposal or the, the, the arrangement that the government has put forward. Uh, Ken Ofori Atta, in, his, um, in that video he posted when he initially put this forward, this debt restructuring plan, said that there wouldn't be any losses on the principal, I believe, for the, for the bonds, if I remember correctly. Um, what, what do you make of that? Was he being you know, clever by half? Because, I mean, the general consensus is that there, there will be um, losses and haircuts to be, to be, uh, you know, to be taken on these, on these bonds. Well, I mean, Rotus, to be fair, in its literal sense, there will be no um, haircut on the principal. And I say this with a tongue in cheek. <laughs> but I mean, we all, know when it comes, we all know when it comes to money, the issue of a uh, time value of money is very important. And value will, will definitely be lost. Um, what is difficult to ascertain right now is the extent of the loss in value. Um, our in-house team, since this announcement, has run a few scenarios. And... Um, when we look at the net present value of, of these new bonds um, and, and with the base case, using a discount rate of the average coupon um, rate um, on, the, on the current existing bonds, it shows as a 53% um, NPV loss. But um, Rotus, I, think I, I think the idea of the government is that if, if this debt exchange um, program is successful and we reach... Um, an agreement with the IMF on a program, they expect it to speed up um, economic recovery and various economic metrics like uh, interest rates and inflation um, will decline. The city is likely to remain stable. So now the idea is that if inflation and interest rates um, drop to single digits, well, we've had um, inflation being at single digits for 
I mean, the last couple of years up until um, COVID hit. So if inflation drops to the single digit um, um, range and you have interest rates also decline into that range, then all of a sudden, the holders of these bonds, which are going to be paying coupons of 10% um, for the next 15 years, it seems to be a good bargain because then really they'll, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll get real interest rates um, and positive real interest rate. So that is the government's idea, and um, but it is debatable, uh, in my opinion. All right. Uh, emerging market borrowing, according to Bloomberg, has hit $250 billion in, in, in 2020. Um, are we set to continue to see a wave of debt distress headlines into 2023 and beyond? Not just talking Ghana now, I'm just talking you know, globally for emerging markets. I mean, one 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 hundred percent, and 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 this emerging market um, debt issue. Um, the trend started with Zambia, Chad, Ethiopia, who um, have sought uh, debt relief under the G20 debt restructuring framework. Um, now we have Ghana with its debt restructuring issue. Kenya is also not sitting too comfortably. So it's it's a, it's an emerging market problem. It's really not just an African problem. We see El Salvador, Pakistan. Um, and the usual suspects, Argentina, all facing issues. So imagine markets are, are in for difficult times with respect to uh, debt in the next 24 months, um, in my opinion. Uh, do you think there's an appetite for debt forgiveness among international creditors um, at all in this climate? Well, I mean, total debt forgiveness may be a stretch, um, um, I would say. There, there are various predictions of um, an impending global recession. We have high global inflation, which has seen central banks of advanced economies um, uh, move to increase interest rates to record highs. We have global supply chain issues. So, I mean, the, the, the whole, everyone is, is having issues to deal with. Um, I personally don't think that debt forgiveness will be a conversation that will get um, any mileage. Uh, even the Paris Club Debt Service Suspension Initiative uh, which for the first time includes China, or, or what it's doing is that it's looking to defer uh, payments of debt and not an outright cancellation of the debt. So the best offer, I believe, on the table really is for emerging markets to uh, kick the debt can uh, further down the road and deal with it um, in the future. Dear, oh dear. Ah, wow. Okay. Um, what do you make of the possibility of Ghana paying for oil using gold reserves? So, I know it's a proposal that's being floated. It's not official, but... Or well, what do you make of it? I mean, the, the, the thinking behind this, behind behind the, the, the idea is good, in my opinion. Uh, currently, we, we have a situation where the city has depreciated by about 58% um, year to date. And um, we're a large importer of um, crude um, oil products. Now, this depreciation coupled with um, global crude prices, um, so export prices currently um, um, increased by over 100 percent compared to what it was at the beginning of the year. So this has been a major contributor to to the inflationary environment that we have now. Um, fuel that we have um, fuel prices at the pump are currently based on forward um, um, USD um, to CD exchange rate. So what is happening is that you have um, um, oil importers pricing the crude based on what the what they believe that the exchange rate between the city and the dollar will be in the future so that when they realize because they sell in cities when they realize um, the money they, 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 they can get enough to go back and import more crude so then um, I, I think for the government um, they believe that the gold for oil policy it will seek to do two things right bring some stability in the pricing of fuel as um, there's not going to be volatility in the in the in the gold price, and, and secondly, it's also going to free up uh, some pressure on Ghana's USD reserves, which will ultimately bring uh, some form of stability to the city. So the whole idea around it is is positive. I just think that the the logistics around it and the ex and the implementation of it is what will need to be um, spot on to be able to get any um, real value from it. Great stuff. Uh, Fred, it's always a pleasure having you. Unfortunately, ran out of time. I wanted to get to finished goods, cocoa, chocolates, and the CD, but we'll, we'll have you on again uh, in the future. Fred DeVore, uh, Managing Director, Apocan Securities, updating us on what's happening over there with Ghana. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time.